So my name is Dan Ramachow, and for the last three years, I've worked to fight the digital divide. I look after a program that runs 40 computer labs from Ecom Seacom to Hubbard Stantalan. We work with all sorts of communities from extremes of poverty to um, some of the most elite suburban communities in, in Halifax. And what I can tell you is every one of those uh, demographics has a digital divide. And the, those divides are getting deeper and wider uh, every second that goes by. We're very fortunate in Canada. We do have uh, uh, a government-sanctioned public access program. Uh, it's got its limitations. Uh, our, our dialogue, if you wish, with what this program should be uh, has been mute with Ottawa for about 10 years, so the program has not evolved as fast as the technology. Um, but we're talking about much bigger issues, and the first issue, or the first thing that I want to talk about, and the first person that I want to talk about, uh, will explore a lot of those themes, and then the rest of the panel will be sort of reactionary. Um, and to my left, uh, Dr. Anatoly Grutz from Dalhousie University, Barbara Allen, and Andrew Wright from Shabbatonia. And I would love it if Andrew could talk to us. A bit of a presentation, do a quick overview. Um, Shabbatonia Community Net, for those of you who don't know, is Atlanta Canada's oldest internet service provider. We're a registered nonprofit uh, charity. And uh, we've been in business now for 16 years this year. When we started, we started out with a text-based internet. Um, this is what you see here, the Google homepage through the Lynx text web browser. Um, strangely enough, we're seeing a resurgence of people signing up for this type of internet access. It's, uh, we offer this account free, same as we did when we were founded. Um, but people are picking up on it. People are going back to this. And it's not because they like the technology. So the digital divide in Nova Scotia is basically three parts. Um, money, can you afford internet access? Knowledge, do you know what to do with it? And uh, the type of access, the location, things taking too long. The digitally left behind, senior citizens, the fastest growing segment of our population, uh, people on social assistance, disability, lower income, illness, and the unemployed. These are some feedback uh, we got from a user survey we did in October. Um, this is the sort of thing that people who don't have internet access are saying. Um, they're using old, outdated equipment. They have health issues, which is affecting their ability to pay for things. Um, this could be any of us. In Finland, internet access has been declared a right. And not just internet access, but one megabit per second per month internet access. They want to raise that to 100 megabits per second per month in uh, 2015. In Halifax, things are going the other way. One in four have no home internet access. One in five, no access at all. They're not going to cap sites. They're just not having, using the net. Uh, back in the late 1990s, we were second in Canada for internet access, or internet usage rather. Uh, we've fallen to 10th place since. Now around the world, a global digital divide is taking shape. Um, if you look up in the far, far corner, Japan, now, the two numbers there are the average internet speed in the country, and below that is the cost for one megabit per second per month. You notice in Japan, one megabit per second per month, the Finnish uh, human rights access, 27 cents US. The average cost in Canada, 650 US. This chart shows where we stand, the green stripe is Canada. Uh, the red, by the way, is the United States there. Um, you notice that in Asia, they're getting much faster internet speeds than we do. They've decided to spend money on that. Um, our place, again, is slipping. The bottom graph is penetration, how much of the society has access to it, and we're around the 80% mark. 
Now this is local bandwidth prices in Halifax. If you're getting internet in Halifax, you're paying one of these prices. Now the thing you'll notice about these prices is that um, the national average, the orange stripe in the middle, you'll notice that um, the cheaper an access plan you get, the more you pay. You'll notice under dial-up, this gets particularly bad, um, with uh, dial-up internet access on the limited hours plans costing thousands of dollars, $18,000 for uh, uh, one megabit per second access over that dial-up. Now, this is a photograph of the future. Um, it's not happening in Nova Scotia, but it's happening in other places. That actually is a telephone pole in a residential neighborhood in Malaysia. Um, the real solution is a whole hog um, rollout of fiber optics. Start laying the stuff like power cable was laid in the 1930s. Um, we need to be putting fiber to the home everywhere we can. And we should make these fiber networks community owned where possible. Um, it's not up to, we don't have to wait on corporations to do things for us. Uh, we can organize as communities and bring fiber optic cable to our communities. Um, an excellent example of this is the Valley Community Fiber Network, which did just that. Organ uh, Annapolis Valley uh, communities organized, brought in their own fiber. Um, it's been a boon for them. Uh, businesses, innovation, people using it. They even started up their own telephone company. That's my bit. Second oldest. Second oldest. Right? Ottawa beat us. <laughs> uh, you've had the opportunity to watch the trends. What do you see currently? Where are we going? Um, there's a, pe a section of the population that's hurting. Um, they're harder off than they ever were before. They're cutting. Well, I mean, when you run out of resources, you cut the fat first. When you run out of fat, you start cutting into muscle. And I think they're into that part of the country now. Um, basically, I don't know. The end of life in Nova Scotia is not exactly pretty. Um, you know, you get sick, you get ill, you get poor, you rely more and more on community hands. A lot of people find themselves into that loop. And um, right now, those are the people who are really, I think, hurting the most because they're, they're suffering both from you know economic pressures and from um, knowledge pressures. They're, the technology is new to them, unfamiliar. They need some hand-holding. <laughs> 